Today is Mike Bankovich. Mike, how are you? I'm good, David. How about yourself? I'm doing really well. I um, I already know the answer to this question, but what do you do <laughs> for a living? So I'm a computer guy who does a lot of consulting and diving into uh, helping people explore what's possible with technology. Lately, it's been mostly cloud stuff. Mostly Azure mm-hmm. stuff, right? Yeah. Well, Azure is the is the cloud. I guess there are other clouds, but, uh, you know, who has time for that? Who has time for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell me about some cool stuff that you're working on. Well, lately I've been doing, uh, talking with people, showing how to get started with migrating applications into Azure and going from being on-premises and all of that yeah. and being able to do it in a repeatable way. Uh, one of the One of the cool new features of, uh, that Microsoft has been working with is dealing with GitHub, and in particular, GitHub Actions. Uh, it's a great way to go out and build a release pipeline that will go out and build your code and then push it out into uh, the cloud for you. And it's usually like that second level of being a cloud uh, application. You go from just being an aware that can run in the cloud to being one that's optimized and really using the tools of the cloud. And uh, usually it takes a little while to get to the point where you've got your DevOps pipelines to do that. Um, but the recent features uh, they've added to Visual Studio have really made that a whole lot easier. Uh, so I've been kind of playing around with that. Well, before you go into the Visual Studio part, mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned a lot of technologies here. Um, uh, yes. GitHub, which is a source control repository, it's been around a long time and was acquired by Microsoft, what, a year ago, I think? Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Azure DevOps, which has the ability to use GitHub as its source control repository. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you mentioned uh, pipelines. Tell us about pipelines. So pipelines are code. Um, it's a way to go out and and run commands to compile and to package and to run tests. Uh, you can also do deployments uh, to Azure services. You can run scripts. Uh, a lot of things you can do. and. This has been around in team services and you know the Visual Studio Online, which used to be TFS. Right. And uh, the, the Azure DevOps Pipelines is kind of the name that I've been using for that. Uh, they have a lot of different kinds of uh, commands that you can go out and run. Uh, in the last couple of years, they've integrated a version of that pipeline that's uh, actually just code called YAML. And as YAML, I can go out and I can script up all the different steps of what I want to do. Right. Um, so, so that's that's the Azure DevOps uh, equivalent of what GitHub Actions are. Um, uh, okay, so GitHub Actions are what? So GitHub is another repository, another uh, collaboration code management uh, company that was acquired by Microsoft last year, the year before, and in 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 part because there's a lot of people that use Git to go and do things, and so they've been adding features to it. And GitHub Actions is a similar uh, tool to what DevOps pipelines are. And what GitHub Actions are is a series of commands I can go out and do the same kind of a thing. So a new feature, uh, it's, it's, it hasn't been there for very long, um, but it's got a lot of promise for making it for people that aren't using uh, team services or the TFS Visual Studio Online or Azure DevOps, You know that, that tool set. Um, if you've got a, a code base in GitHub, you can use that to a- accomplish similar kinds of things. Okay, so it's one or the other. You'll either use Azure DevOps to do your automated build and deploy, or you'd use GitHub Actions. Is that fair? Uh, is the pipeline tool? Yeah, I would say that you know, it's, it's, it's an alternative, right? Okay. The code can sit wherever you want to, wherever you want. Uh, Azure DevOps is more flexible in that it allows you to have your code in Bitbucket, GitHub, uh, Team Foundation, or, or DevOps, or other places. Uh, GitHub Actions, it works with with GitHub. So your code needs to be in okay. GitHub uh, okay. to use the GitHub Actions. Okay. Um, and, and actually, I did a show with uh, Edward Thompson, who mm-hmm. actually was one of the folks that built GitHub Actions. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he knows it pretty well. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Probably a lot better than me. <laughs> since yeah. that time, I think some tooling has been put into Visual Studio that uh, mm-hmm. is kind of exciting. Yeah. Tell me about that. 
So, so one of the challenges I've had with uh, getting people into the cloud is that you, you go out and you build an application and then you push it into the cloud by clicking through a bunch of different icons and opening up a dialog and you click, 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 and then you click on publish and it sends it off. And the trouble with that is repeating those clicks or handing it off to someone else so they can do that job for you. And um, in the uh, most recent release of Visual Studio, I think it's 16.8 maybe, um, there's a preview feature that you can find under settings for uh, working with GitHub Actions. And what it does is if your code is in GitHub, uh, it'll light up a option to create a YAML pipeline uh, that the code that GitHub Actions runs on to do that deployment for you. So when I go to the publish code, right click publish, instead of just okay. pushing the code out there, it creates a pipeline that'll do it for you. Okay, so um, if I understand this, then when I right click publish, the the challenge is that the next time I want to deploy, I also have to right click publish. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if it creates this pipeline, then the next time I don't have to right click publish, I can use the pipeline. I can automate that process. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. So whenever you uh, commit to the master branch or whatever branch you've got it turned on to, it'll uh, trigger off of the commit as opposed to waiting for you to click publish. Um, I don't usually do this on this show, but maybe you could show us that. Do you have Visual Studio open right now? I can get it open. Give me okay. a second here. And, uh, and just you mentioned that uh, it has to be a, cur uh, a more current version. I just checked. I'm not at the most current release. I'm at like mm -hmm. 16.4, I think, uh, which is below what you said. So I'm, well, I'm going to have to update so I can't see it. I'm at 16.4.2, so I'm several months behind. Mm -hmm. well, let me see if I can open this up in a clean window here. And it'll take me a second to do that. But yeah. um, the uh, idea is that you need to have uh, version 16.8 or later. Okay. And in that, they have this, this feature. And what it is, is it's a, it generates a file for you that is that YAML pipeline. And then when you commit it to your GitHub repo, it, it'll pull it up and show you where that's going. Um, and let me do this also here. I always like this idea that we're uh, our tools that are accessing our source code repository mm -hmm. are also in the source code repository. So we can version those and we can share them and we get mm -hmm. <laughs> all those advantages of working with a team and rolling mm -hmm. things back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. And we'll create a, just a simple uh, .NET Core kind of an application. And then you've got a .NET Core application. Click on Create. We'll call this my tech friend app. And we'll just throw that into some place and click on Create. I'm going to create a .NET Core 3.1 app. Click on Create. But this is the uh, demo that I do all the time, which is where I've got a dad joke. <laughs> and all, right. all it is is it's a piece of uh, H2 that comes up with a jumbotron and then a JavaScript that goes out to get dad joke and then it replaces the ID joke with the, uh, the dad joke. So, so here you can see I've got this application. I call it my dad app. And what it is, is it's a, a dad joke that you can go out, it hits an API and just replaces uh, the code with that. Now, normally I would go out and I'd say, okay, well, let's publish this. I right click and say publish. It goes out to the UI, which then comes up and I can go to publish. And I select that and then it comes up with a nice little thing that says, okay, well, where do you want to publish this to? So if I go to Azure, I can go and I can click on web app service and I can click to windows, click on next. And then it says, where do you want to put it? Pick out an app service in a subscription. This will go out and load up all my subscriptions. Got it. So this dialogue you're showing now, that's been in there since uh, the beginning of Azure. It's been since there for the 10 years. It's been there for a long time, making it easy to go out and publish out 
you can pick the service where you want to put it. It all just kind of gets sent out there, and it's all great. Yeah, it's um, okay. I mean, it's okay. It's it's nice and kind of quick and dirty, but like as you said earlier, it isn't repeatable. It's uh, right. if you're doing this a lot, or if you're trying to share this configuration with someone else, it's a little bit difficult. But let me go through uh, again. This is showing more information than what I'd like to show. But if I come out here and refresh this, it says, here's my I'm a demo. I can click out and I can say, where do I want to push this? I can say, I'm going to send this out to my Agile Serbia group. Because that's where I did this talk. Mm -hmm. And I can pick the place I want to publish it. Which thing comes back and says, here you go. Um, here I've got a subscription. I'm going out to my Benko.com account and I'm publishing it into my demo user group. And I've got a service. I can click on, you know, publish this out to my proof of concept data app and say finish. Which then takes us down to creating a published profile. And as you can see, all it does is it gives me the thing so I can click on publish and push the code out there. However, um, if I want to repeat this or if I want to set up a DevOps pipeline or something like that, I've got to have, you know, another whole set of processes to go to do that. Now, because this is a brand new application, I haven't put it anywhere. Um, and the other thing is that I'm using GitHub Actions. And one of the things you can do if you go into Visual Studio up to your search window and you search for GitHub Actions, You'll find that there's GitHub Action Support in Publish. Hmm. There's a setting that is new in Visual Studio. And you can turn this on by coming down here and saying, you know, enable this. When I do, if I go over here and I have this in source control, so let's take this and add this to source control, add it to Git. And instead of putting this into Somewhere um, I'm going to use GitHub to be my tech friends app. I'm going to create a private repo because I'm using GitHub Enterprise. Uh, I'll say create and push. Now, once I've done this, it's going to say, okay, save everything. I'll be good. And then now it's in, uh, it's now can take my code, push it up into GitHub. And the nice thing about that is that then I can take advantage of the other GitHub features like GitHub Actions to be able to do the publish. Because now when this is done, and we'll just let it let it get done here. If I right click and I say create a new publish profile, I'm gonna do a new one because this one that's here would publish directly to Azure. Okay. What I can do now is I can do something similar, but you'll notice a couple of new options in the publish window. Come down here, I'm gonna to go to Azure. I'll pick my Windows app service, click on next. And then I'm going to pick where I want to put it. Again, going to the same subscription, same place. I've got existing infrastructure I'm gonna use. In this case, I'll go to Agile Serbia. And I'll go down to my dad app, proof of concept. And then when I click on, you'll notice that the next button is, is available. It was grayed out before. Okay. When I click on next, you'll notice I can either do the same thing I did before, which is publish on demand, which just generates the publish profile, mm -hmm. or I can use GitHub Actions, which generates a workflow file. Mm -hmm. So if I click that and click on finish, now what it's going to do is it's going to, instead of taking the code and push it out there, it's going to create a YAML file for me that defines how that publish works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so a couple of things got created here. One is I've got my data app published profile. It downloaded that from Azure and it's got the credentials to be able to log into Azure and do that publish. And it stored that as a secret inside of my GitHub repository. And the second thing it did is it gave me this uh, data app YAML file, which I can edit. And if you take a look at the edit of this, um, it'll then show you here's all of the things that it needs to be able to go out and, and do that publishing. Now, the beautiful thing about this is when I do my commit and push this, it'll add that to uh, the GitHub Actions, and then it'll actually go out and do that publish. Mm -hmm. So let's take this, and you'll see here's my changes. I go down to take this, and we'll say 
uh, add a commit message here, and that is to add uh, GitHub actions. And then say a commit in sync. So now you're committing to the GitHub repository, this YAML file. Yes. Which is the GitHub actions. Yep. And it pushes that up into uh, that environment, which okay. then I can open up on GitHub. So there's my commit created locally, pushing the current branch. And then if I go over here to my GitHub stuff and open it up on GitHub itself, I think I can go to click on that. And this this should open up a browser window. Which is so the there. next step is if you want to make this repeatable is to do your uh, deployments through GitHub through this pipeline that's created in GitHub yeah. rather than through Visual Studio. Right. right, and so, yep. And if I drag this window over here to where you can see it. Oh, there you go, that, that open a browser window with GitHub, yep. just, just really yep. tiny, you need to maximize yeah. that. Maximize this, and you'll see that, you know, I just did my one minute commit a minute ago, but if I go to actions, You'll find that over here in actions, there's my GitHub build. The deploy uh, went out and created that and ran it. So if I look at the uh, deploy for Azure.NET Core app, um, you can see here's the, the build of that. It actually ran in, a, in just about a minute. And it took me two minutes to get over here to see it, but I can see there's the build. I can open up and view the log of it. It shows me everything that got uh, created and uh, the deployment of it, and you can see it, it's ran. It even did a deployment to um, to Azure for me. So this succeeded and actually deployed the app. If you open up oh, the nice. code. And so then I can click over here on this. And now whenever I do a commit to my source code, it gets pushed up to my Azure dat dat app. And so then I can open that up and you can see, you know, here's my dat app running inside of Azure. But the cool part about it is that the GitHub Actions, being able to create that pipeline directly from Visual Studio right. is brilliant. Because you know, I don't have to be a DevOps engineer to do this. I just go out and write code and then uh, you know, commit it. Um, now, this is a feature that's available inside of, uh, with GitHub as your uh, code repo mm -hmm. uh, today. So you know, maybe someday they'll add this for DevOps pipelines, but for now, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to take going to the cloud and making it that much easier and that much more repeatable. So yeah, that's really nice. Um, so it um, if uh, if you had a faster machine or if we're running faster mm -hmm. today, <laughs> this could have been done really, really quickly. But I like the fact there were just a few steps involved and a, uh, the fact that I don't have to be a YAML expert, especially right. if I only use YAML once in a while, I don't have to relearn that syntax over and over again um, uh -huh. because I haven't touched it for two months, for example. Well, the, and the cool part about this is that these steps that are going out here, I mean, you can you can come out here and you can just uh, add your own code into things. So like where it goes out right. and does store packages, you can add custom steps. Um, the Visual Studio Editor doesn't tie into like the marketplace of uh, actions that are available. But uh, one of the things that I do is I do tokenizing. And so there's custom actions I can go out and I can plug in. Um, so like, for instance, in my app, when it's running, I might want to put in the build version or something like ah. that. Um, and so, you know, I, I could do that right now, but it might take us a few minutes. But actually, let's do it. Okay. It takes just a second. So if I go into my index page, um, I've got my joke running, but I really want to um, see where my machine, where this stuff is running. So I have some environment variables that I created, uh, and I've got a toolbox snippet that actually has some of this stuff. So if I go to my toolbox. I open this up. Um, so I've got my uh, environment information. So here's my environment. So my runtime environment is just an alert that shows kind of you know what machine it's running on, what it's going to look like. Um, I might do alert info just because it's a white box instead of a red one. And then I'll come down here and I'll say 
you know, here's uh, like build information. Mm. So let's do this. I'm going to add some GitHub pipeline uh, variables to this. So this has got uh, the action, it's got the run ID, it's got the GitHub run number. These are all variables that are part of GitHub actions. Hmm. And uh, let's just make this an HR here so we can kind of see a little bit more. If I run this locally, it, would just, it doesn't do anything. But I've got this uh, syntax here, which has got a pound and then a curly brace, and then inside of it, the name of something. Mm -hmm. There's a tokenizer tool that was created inside of uh, Azure DevOps team TFS that was an extension that you could use for tokenizing. I can do the same kind of tokenizing inside of GitHub Actions by going up here and adding that code to replace the tokens. And that is uh, before I build the application, I'm going to add this step. And this is running this tokenizer. And so what it's going to do is it's going to replace all the tokens on anything that's a CSHTML uh, that has that token sequence with the value from the uh, the file. Cool oh, thing about this. Yeah. Um, I can even do builds. And I can do all kinds of interesting things about this. But if I take these two changes and commit this, and we'll say add tokenizing on the build step, Commit all in sync. Trick is getting this to uh, respond to my mouse, which seems to be super sensitive today. Everybody's a little sensitive these days. It is. I, th I think it's a COVID thing. <laughs> then uh, the cool little window here that says Visual Studio, we'll go ahead and say save. And so what I did was I added this replace tokens custom job that's coming from C Schleiden, and it'll push it into uh, into my GitHub Actions along with the code for the index change that I made. Sorry, it's coming from where? So the token action, this the step that I added here, will uh, look at any CSHTML file. So the index file that I added here that's got the um, has the the variables in here, mm -hmm, right? So I can go out and I can browse out to this again. Open oh, that I see. up. So if I view source on that, instead of saying mm -hmm. uh, pound bracket GitHub underscore something, yep. it'll actually have those values in it. Right. So now in my GitHub Actions, I can go out and you can see it's running again. I added the tokenizing. Oh. I open this up and see, you know, the 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 build of it. Click on the link here and see where it's at. Um, again, it runs pretty quick, so it's already it uh, it set up the core. It replaced the tokens before it built the app, built the app, tested it. Now it's publishing it to Azure, and then when that gets done, then I can see what those uh, variables are that were part of that build. So then I can come down here and say, open up our website, which is right here. Let's refresh the page. So there's my friends. I can't wait to see what the next dad joke's going to be. Uh -huh. You're wondering why the Frisbee was getting bigger? And then it hit me. <laughs> so there you can see uh, the coolest doctor in the hospital. <laughs> but you look at all those GitHub variables, including the SHA, the run number, the GitHub run ID, uh, the name of the tokens, I can put in other things. So like, for instance, if you have environment variables or you have right. different types of life cycle, uh, things that you need to include or uh, the current date. I, I use right. the date on my documentation. So I create markdown that has you know the active current version. Um, mm. But the cool part about this is that there's a number of different actions you can go out and play with. Um, if you're in the editor for that file, let's go back over to uh, GitHub. And go back over the code. The uh, the file gets added under uh, the GitHub. Let's see how did I go back? Go back. Come on back. So if I go back over here to code, 
the um, the file is in the workflows. And if you take a look at this and you're editing this inside of GitHub, then you can uh, use the marketplace to pull up different, uh, get the intelligent IntelliSense on this and say, okay, well, here's all the different marketplace actions that are out there. Oh, nice. So you can see, you know, like things like setting up JavaScript, setting up cache, uh, doing deployment, monitoring, you know, all of these different categories of things. So maybe you want to do, you know, some sort of marketing with or monitoring with uh, Jira or GitHub Actions or tying into Light stuff. Um, but you uh, can grab these and then edit it as well. This would be just another step in your YAML file as part of your mm -hmm. build process. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. um, where uh, where can people go to learn more about this? So the place that I would go to is uh, on GitHub. They've got a lot of uh, you know documentation. You know those are are, are hit and miss. Um, you can look for videos, uh, but the uh, the Dev Essentials or was that the uh, the conference that we just did a couple of weeks ago? Um, there was a couple sessions where they went through and really talked about how this all comes together. It is pretty new, so um, I would just uh, you know pay attention to the Visual Studio blog, and then of course. The place where you can get all things um, is go out here to uh, BencoTips.com because I'll have a blog. that's my blog and that's where I'll have a blog post on GitHub Actions and I also have a set of five minute uh, to code videos which if you uh -huh. click on five minutes uh, these are short little uh, code snippets some of them are shorter than others but they're meant to be uh, quick hits on how to go out and do this and so. Um, I'll be adding a five minutes to code segment on this uh, probably uh, before the end of the year. Terrific. This won't be out until January anyway, so that's really good timing. Uh, the, this is out today. Had this. I, have, I have a similar show. I call it G-Cast, mm -hmm. uh, just screencast that I've created. And mm -hmm. uh, I do something really similar, little 10-minute videos of how to do a thing mm -hmm. in with your computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and it's like these are, uh, you know, using whatever technology I had at the time to create it. You know, yeah, some I of these use are, Camtasia yeah. for, for yeah. those. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's that's where you can go out and you can check it out. Mike, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I hope you stay safe. Yeah, you too. Everything's better when you've got technology and friends.